Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is 8 News. Well, in the Suez Canal, we have some good news. It will be freed upon the weekend, that poor ship that got stuck. Now, we have one side says it was deliberate, other says it was wind. I think it was a little bit of both, but let's see what the reports say in this situation. I don't want to put any conclusions onto anything anymore, because usually when I put conclusions on things and then basically it's just hearsay we were not there so we don't know what happens it could have happened but the weirdest part is here here's the weirdest uh, thing about the whole ship the, the uh they said it was 100 percent legit with the track it made it looked like a penis to me to be honest with you i'm going to tell you straight up it looked like a penis and you know I, you could take it as what it is. It could be just as the formation. But if it's a form of a penis, you got to have to think. But then you're going to be in your thinking game. And then, you, you know, you could be wrong. And it could just be what it was. And it was just in the shape of a penis. It's kind of like that Disney Moroccan area that had a penis-looking uh, structure outside of Morocco. But it's not a penis. It's part of a building. But... The Imagineers didn't really plan on making it look like a penis. The Imagineers were planning to make put a part of the landscape. But then a Disney uh, group decided to call it the Moroccan, e uh, like the Moroccan penis. And I made a joke about the Moroccan ears and everything else. It's crazy. <laughs> Anywho, um, so let's, let's not point the blame and fingers. But it is causing a huge delay in shipments across the world. And, of, of course, that's concerning to me when it comes to, you know, live cattle to uh, uh, perishable goods. Um, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it gets me very worried when, you know, they can't deliver food. And there's one that has water on there for, uh, air, you know, water for, uh, for like, I think, uh, places where don't doesn't have water and uh that could be a life threatening thing right there if it was delayed and uh i don't know i don't know what the water ship was for so maybe it was for something we don't even know but they said there was a water ship out there for for delivering water to a somewhere so um I assume it's for irrigation and uh, drinking purposes. I assume, but I'm not sure. But if it is for drinking purposes, people in those type of situations have a reason, basically a um, say, okay, we're going to get down to this thing. We need to get more water, and then we have to order it. So that is the whole situation. I don't know the whole situation on that ship. But I do know there is a coffee ship out there that has a bunch of coffee from all around the world. And it's going to be delayed. And uh, to your coffee drinkers out there, you know, you know, it's going to be delayed. Me, personally, I don't drink coffee, so I'm not going to be like, oh my god! I'm not going to be like that. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, and now if it's an energy drink ship, and then, I'm, then, then we, we have a problem. I'm just kidding. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, in general, you know, it's going to, stuff are going to be delayed. Um, how long they're going to be delayed, they think they can get the ship out by the end of this weekend. If not, then we should worry completely about the supply of a lot of things, like clothes, shoes, plastics. And all this is for manufacturing farming purposes, too. So, you know, you got to think of if this is going to be a huge delay there's going to be delay in making the food or gathering the food and then they have to switch to manual labor and then when they do manual labor that means less supply full on demand and unfortunately I got a feeling that we may have to go to physical labor by the end of the year to be brutally honest with you and what that details is some people are just not going to have their vegetables or food 
or you're going to be paying an exorbitant amount of prices because it's physical labor that's involved into the situation, like picking, not like, you know, they don't have the tractor anymore that they can just run over the thing and pick it up. And uh, it's going to be a supply and demand issue. That's basically what it is, is a supply and demand issue. And in a time we live in a now society, it really will not end well, period, for anything. And I've been hearing some reports that concern me about people getting their groceries stolen and basically beat up for groceries. I am not sure if that is going around the rumor mill or I've been hearing like places around the United States that are doing like people are just getting their ass kicked due to groceries but we gotta have to stop this madness guys you know it's we're all this ship together and you know what ship I'm talking about a boat being stuck in the Suez Canal and I'm saying we're on this ship now we uh we all have to join uh, hands and we have to work you know be united you know whatever happened to the olden days where we actually were united it seems like we're slowly fading away and um, you know people talk about the social credit score and everything else I'm not gonna get into that uh, social credit score I believe there should be a different type of credit score personally I believe People who pay their bills every single month like I do, like my electricity bill, my water bill, and everything else, and my cell phone bill, I pay that every single month for the past seven years. And because I, I used to live in a, in a place that used to cover all that, and now I'm covering for the next last seven years, I've been covering the water and all that stuff and my insurance. You know, I paid my insurance, but... I mean, like right now, the water and electricity. I pay those two every month, every year, without a hitch, you know, without a complaining, really. And uh, never had my power turned off. Only one time, but it was a, um, it was not, it was not a billing mistake. It was basically they had to shut off the power in my area because they were working on the lines. So I, I can have empathy on people who had their power shut off. It's not a fun thing. I and mean, I live in Florida, for crying out loud. So, you know, Hurricane Central, you know. I, I had hurricanes knock out the power for, our, I think the longest time I had no power was for like six days. I think I remember it. When I was a kid, I was in, uh, I think I was in middle school. And I think one of the hurricanes came. <laughs> you know, when you're in middle school, I'm going to tell you something. When you're in middle school, and, uh, when the principal gets on and says, uh, we're not going to have school, ladies and gentlemen, due to the hurricane that's coming, we all burst and yay! But, uh, I can actually picture my parents. They were so worried, to be honest with you. My parents were like, you know, not because we were, I was home. It was because it was, you know, it was a dangerous storm and it knocked out power for six days. But we survived. We survived really well. See, my mom was a resourceful lady, and my father was a resourceful man, and we had candles. My mom loved candles, and guess her can we? <laughs> oh lordy, I remember the candles thing she used to. She had to have candles everywhere, and we had to use all those candles to light the house, you know, and all that. And then we had to buy all new candles after that. It was funny as heck. Oh, my mom with her candles. May she rest in peace. I miss her so much. Anywho, so that's what happened. We used all the candles, and, uh... Eh, Mom didn't really care about the candles. She knew she could get new ones. But... I think she was happy about that one, because she always wanted new candles. My mother was a big Hummel collector, too, of those Hummels. Oh, she had collecting up the wazoo of Hummels. I think my... One of my brothers has the Hummels. I, I remember... A long time ago, we were digging through the Hummel collection. Oh, those Hummels. I bet you they're worth something now. I tell you, those Hummels probably are worth something. Then we had those Yard Rows. Or one of the Yard Rows. It's, uh... I think it was called Yard Row. I'm not sure. But, uh, those were nice. I loved those, uh, things. Those, those remind me of home. 
And then my dad, when I was just a kid, like five or four years old, I remember he used to have a whole set of pipes. Uh, pipes, you know, just regular tobacco pipes. And uh, he used to smoke a tobacco pipe every single day. I remember. That's how I remember my father when I was a kid, is smoking a tobacco pipe. Huh. Yeah. I remember going to the uh, tobacco store to pick up uh, the uh, tobacco thing with the ship on it. I forgot what it's called. But uh, I started smoking pipes at 21. Uh, it's not 21. No. I started smoking pipes, I think, at 19 years old. Yeah, I have a good pipe once in a while, a good tobacco pipe. They don't make pipes anymore, to be brutally honest with you. Not like they used to do in the 80s and 90s. They kind of don't sell pipes. I like pipes. I like to smoke a nice pipe. Is that a problem? I don't know. Probably. If you ask my doctor, it could be a problem. <laughs> but anywho, I love you all, and I hope you have a wonderful day. And, uh... Oh, I, I, I just, you know, I, I forgot to mention this thing. Um... I take magnesium oxide, um, magnesium oxide, it's powder, and, uh, you put it in some water, and you stir it into water, you can't taste it, and I have, uh, one for breakfast, one for lunch, and one for dinner, and I, you know, I drink that, and the funny part is, I'm calm as, as a cucumber, I'm very calm, and, uh, I think I found, because my body is so, so sensitive, and, and it can take take a lot of medicine and I can take low doses of medicine and it gets me high. Like the lowest dose of oxycodone will knock me off my butt. Or the lowest dose of Vicodin will knock me off the butt. Oh, I think really low, really low dose. I, like one melatonin, I think one, uh, two microgram melatonin will knock me out. So I took, uh, this magnesium and, uh, I just started taking it. One for, uh, breakfast, one for lunch, and one for dinner. And I am really worry-free, actually. Um, I'm actually calm and cool and collected. So this magnesium actually helps and assists me with my anxiety I have. So give that a try, ladies and gentlemen. I'll talk to you later, and Godspeed the right.